Se mobiliser, réinventer, continuer à avancer. Pour nos 339 000 clients professionnels et entreprises, nous sommes mobilisés. C'est vous l'avenir, Société Générale. Mobiliser, réinventer, continuer à avancer. Pour nos 339 000 clients professionnels et entreprises, nous sommes mobilisés. C'est vous l'avenir, Société Générale. Welcome everybody, uh, glad to have you today. Uh, today is the first edition of uh, SG Ventures Demo Day around uh, bank as a service and uh, e-commerce. As you may know, uh, SG Ventures is the corporate VC arm of Société Générale, uh, created three years ago. Our goal is to accelerate the digital transformation of our business, investing in startups, equity, and creating powerful syner synergies between startups on one side and Société Générale on the other. Uh, to date, to give you some figures, we invested in more than 30 startups, uh, which represents more than 270 million euros invested. Today, we are glad to host uh, towards the first edition of SG Ventures Demo Day around bank as a service and e-commerce with three startups of uh, our portfolio. Uh, Lemonero, which is operating in uh, revenue-based financing, Trezor, the fintech of uh, fintech, now targeting large corporates, uh, and Fintechture, which is operating in account-to-account -account payments. If you are an investor, a corporate, a startup, or even just curious about e-commerce, this event is made for you. For each startup, we will first have a short demo and business presentation during around 10 minutes. Please feel free to ask all of your questions within the LinkedIn chat during the presentation, and we will try to answer each of them at the end of the presentation during the Q&A session. That's important and we count on you. We are now starting with the first startup, Fintechture, and we are glad to welcome Reda Sherai. Hello, Alexi. Thank you very much. So my name is Reda. I am a Fintechture co-founder and CEO of Fintechture, and I have uh, 10 minutes to explain what we try to achieve at, uh, at Fintechture. So, <clears throat> Uh, here is our playground, 130 trillion USD in GMB. It's the B2B payments, uh, and uh, we want to be part of it. Uh, but the market is full of uh, unresolved paper that we have tried to list on the right. Uh, prohibitive costs, unfit payment methods. I'm referring to uh, bank cards, uh, for example. Uh, complex, time-consuming, and sometimes uh, impossible reconciliation, and I'm referring to bank transfer, and up to 90% of these transactions are still um, happening offline. So our value proposition is clear. Develop the next generation payment platform for online and offline businesses. Offline is also about... Um, companies, large accounts, which still see e-commerce or B2B uh, web portal uh, as an important challenge. Uh, but we want to help these companies as well uh, increase sales, move money faster and safer, uh, and make important cost savings uh, on their direct costs, which means fee transaction, but also uh, on the time they spent uh, doing manual uh, reconciliation or manual uh, debt collection. So let's see how we uh, try to help our clients. 
The first one is our ability to reduce drastically technical and uh, financial intermediaries. We basically connect banks between them, thanks to open banking. I think everyone here has already heard about open banking, but FinTecture is not an open banking provider. It is not about providing uh, an aggregation of bank-to-bank uh, -bank APIs. Mm -hmm. Um, it's about understanding how each bank is behaving when we call its API. It's about understanding if the bank, for example, is confirming the payment instantly, when and if the bank settles fund instantly with a regular SEPA transfer, for example, uh, what bank is providing instant SEPA APIs, what bank is charging this, uh, this instant transfer, and what, ba what bank are, uh, is not charging it. So this is what we have built at FinTechTur. This is what we call the smart acceptance two years ago. Merchants do not need um, an, a, an API aggregating thousands of API. They need a, an end-to-end -end payment solution. And this is what we have built uh, two years ago, thanks to our fast uh, go-to-market providing uh, plugins for our e-merchants for most used CMSs uh, and understanding APIs behaviors. But open banking is part of the solution. Open banking is limited. Let me give you an example. Public institution cannot pay with open banking. A large account cannot pay with open banking. Some mid-market companies cannot pay with open banking because they have uh, internal processes uh, to, to, to handle before approving a payment. So before explaining how we complete the open banking limitation and what we have built with Societe Generale, um, let's try to understand what we do for our clients for online and offline. So we started, as I say, with the online use cases, okay? But when it came to B2B, uh, e-commerce pure player, we noticed that even for these merchants, only 10% in average of payments were happening uh, online. Um, basically, these payments are made by buyers uh, who have no payment terms, no credit line. All other buyers have net terms. They can pay after 30 days, 60 days, and therefore the payment is done offline, not on the B2B portal, web portal, not on the e-commerce. Uh, basically, uh, vendors, they come on the website, they place order, but they will pay afterwards, and the, and the seller will raise an invoice, and the buyer will have, for example, 30, 60 days to pay it. So even for clients having all their activities online, payment is still, uh, in most cases, happening offline. But offline is... <laughs> Is about heavy integration, long tech cycle. If you want to be part of the offline tools of the client, it takes time. Tech is changing. VC game is changing. Investors want to see volumes and revenue now, not in one year. So we need to be fast. Um, I have 10 minutes. I, can, I can't go in, in detail, but I, I will take a question after, after, after the presentation. What we have built, basically, is a platform allowing our vendors to offer exactly uh, the same checkout experience to their buyers for their offline payments with no tech integration at all, displaying what we call this payment, this FinTech True Payment Selector with all or part of our payment method when it comes to have invoices paid, because this is what we're talking about. And very um, quickly, Quick words, few words about smart transfer that we see uh, in the payment selector. As I say, open banking showed some limitation that I have mentioned. And we needed to build um, a product that basically could replicate FinTechture uh, payment initiation product benefits uh, replicated to regular uh, bank transfer. Basically, it means even with regular bank transfer, how can we guarantee to our vendors 100% uh, of payment reconciliation? And how can we allow them to track these very payments 
update their payment status, the, their order status, their invoice status automatically, exactly as uh, we can do it with the, with the payment initiation service. So we saw some uh, payment methods in our uh, payment selector. Uh, but we have maybe the most comprehensive portfolio uh, and it covers all the pain points experienced by our merchants. We see the efficient B2B payments that I have mentioned. We can allow for our client to schedule the payments. I mean, the buyer of our client, they can schedule the payments and pay later, for example. This is basically what we, uh, what we notice in, in a B2B uh, e-commerce use cases, for example. Disbursement, quick words about disbursement. Uh, and it is also part of explanation of why open banking is limited. So open banking has completely forgotten about disbursements and refunds. Uh, we work with uh, large accounts and open banking, banked, uh, account to account payment solution is okay, but there is nothing to pay back their client, to refund their client partially or totally. So. With Societe Generale, we have built uh, a disbursement product based on instant payments, and we have combined it with open banking. And uh, we can talk, for example, about Auchan, which is public, so this is why I can talk about it, where we basically help them reduce their disbursement cost by 25, not three or four, by 25. This is about the disbursement cost. And the customer journey experience is just amazing because we can um, pay them on their account with instant SEPA transfer thanks to a smart uh, business model, which is basically a SaaS business model. And this is made possible thanks with what we are trying to build uh, with Societe Generale. So, of course, I can show you so many, <laughs> so many aspects of the portfolio, so many products. Maybe if we have time, we can see uh, other product customer journey uh, during the, 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 the Q&A session. But here is maybe, maybe one of the most emblematic product is the account to account payment method, where we basically uh, are in checkouts with other payment method provided by uh, payment service providers. And we simply ask uh, the buyer to select his bank and thanks to our, thanks to the app to app um, customer journey, we open his bank app on his mobile directly, and he need, he just needs to approve the payment and authenticate exactly as, as if he was authenticating, confirming strongly a payment with the, uh, with credit cards. Um, maybe I think I have thirty seconds left. Um, Fintecture, our product today is global. Open banking is, let's say, pan-European solution. With the smart bank transfer that we have built, we now can play global. Our European clients uh, receive transfers from countries where there is no open banking. So we had to find a solution for these guys to be their one-stop uh, shop payment platform, B2B payment platform. So they don't need to um, talk to any other uh, payment service provider to process all their uh, bank transfer, for example. We are three co-founders. We are 75 people with 40 positions opened. We have raised so far um, something around 30 million, 29 to be, to be precise, uh, million uh, euro. And we have more than uh, 3,000 Americans. And among these 3,000 Americans, uh, more than 50 uh, category leaders processing uh, more than 1 billion GMV. Uh, and you can see among our investors, of course, uh, Societe General Ventures. So thank you for, for your time. And if there's any question, I'm happy to, to take it, Alexi. Thank you very much, uh, Reda, for this, uh, this great presentation. Uh, your, your product is, uh, is uh, kind of uh, fantastic and uh, is representing the, the future of payment. Uh, I would have a first question. Uh, is it the end for the card payment? I don't think it's the end for card payment. Uh, it's, it's complicated, for example, for B2C 
to compete with cards payments. Let's say we complete cards payments. Uh, it is another story when it comes to B2B payments, because as you know, Alexi, uh, card payments are expensive. If you want to collect your invoice with card payments, it's not the right payment method to use because interchange is expensive. It can be up to 1.2% in France and even more. Uh, if you collect an invoice, if a French vendor collects an invoice by card from another uh, buyer in Spain, for example. So um, let's say we complete what cards are trying to achieve in the B2C, even if it's not the main focus. And when it comes to B2B, uh, I think we are way more relevant than cards or any other payment method. Great, thank you. We have another question from uh, Lina Taburi, uh, which is asking, who is asking if you are proposing white label for merchants. No, fintech is a brand. It's not even in, in your interest to be white labeled. Uh, fintech is a brand uh, present in more than three thousand checkouts, used by so many large accounts as I have said. So there is a brand awareness. This fintech button is now a brand and at least it's our it's our goal to make it to make it uh, the most preferred b2b payment method for for merchants so there is no interest is just displaying a, a wire transfer white label button uh, in uh, e merchant checkouts thank you Reda. we have another question about uh, claim and fraud uh, a linkedin user which is asking uh, that card payments are covering uh, covered against uh, fraud uh, through a claim process is it uh, do, do you have the same process on, on your payment method so uh, we have a chance to have thanks to uh, psd2 an irrevocable payment method so basically when someone pays he cannot cancel or modify the payments and each payment with bank to bank payment method based on open banking is uh, subject to strong customer authentication so fraud is super limited i cannot say that there is no fraud at all but it is super limited and of course if there is fraud fin picture is the contact between the merchant and the bank um, as a payment institution authorized by ACPRA, we have to play this role uh, for our merchant, but it's almost never happened, to be honest. Okay, great. Now now we have a question about the, the, co the collaboration between uh, a startup and a large group like uh, Société Générale. Uh, how, okay, how do you collaborate uh, with Société Générale and uh, what is your relationship with the bank? Uh, with Société Générale in particular, or with banks? Um, I think I think that you can answer to the to both. both of the okay. So, <clears throat> when open banking started a few years ago, I think banks uh, saw it as a as a threat to their business model, which is true because basically, uh, what banks are uh, obliged to do is provide uh, PIS APIs. And there is no monetization model for these banks. They invest a lot of money to allow fintechs like Fintechture to move money from account A to account B. So we are basically a threat for them. And some banks have provided good working APIs and some bank have provided APIs that still can be discussed. So there were basically two options. Either we complain about it and we say, oh, it's not working. Uh, what, what can we do? Are we waiting to have um, uh, an homogeneous um, uh, APIs ecosystem in Europe before providing a product? This is not what we have uh, chosen to do. We have chosen to think of uh, additional layers to complete our open banking infrastructure. And when open ba if, even when open banking is working correctly, it is still limited, as I have mentioned. So open banking is part of the product. Let's say it is maybe 15%, maximum 20% of fintech product. And we have enriched it with new payment methods, with fallbacks, with um, a, full co a comprehensive portfolio of payment methods uh, to um, offer a fallback to our clients and to address this open banking limitation. And disbursement with Société Générale is another example of how we can allow our American to instantly refund their payments while open banking has completely 
uh, forgotten about uh, refunds. Okay, thank you. Maybe I, I would have a last uh, question, Reda, for you. Uh, in terms of geography, could you uh, give us a little bit more details about uh, in which country you're operating right now, uh, in which country we want to, you want to expand uh, in order to give uh, more feedback to our public uh, where, where you're operating and uh, where you can help them? Sure. So we are, we are connected to banks in France, in Spain, where we are opening an office, as you say, as you know, sorry, uh, in Italy, in Germany, in the UK. Uh, but even if we are connected to most of European countries with open banking, it is not enough. Because what can we offer to a French client who is collecting payment from a country in Europe who is not part of the PSD2 uh, regulation. What can we offer to a client who is uh, collecting payment from buyers in the in the US or in Asia? So basically, again, we have completed open banking with these smart bank transfers that we can, for those who are interested, uh, go a little bit deeper and and, and show uh, show the product, show the platform, explain it as well to become. Uh, and to provide, let's say, um, a B2B platform, allowing them to collect payments globally. And that is super important. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Reda. I think we answered all the questions about uh, of the public. Uh, if you are a merchant, if you know a merchant that uh, want to, to uh, to build a new uh, payment uh, method on its platform, just contact Reda. Uh, he can answer your questions. He can uh, make you a demo. Uh, thank you very much, Reda. Uh, and uh, now we are welcoming uh, Cedric Cassini from Trezor. Hello, Cedric. You are going to talk uh, to the public about uh, Trezor, uh, the, the fintech of the fintech. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alexi, and uh, hello, everyone. My name is Cedric. I'm in charge of the business department for, for Trezor. So, so Trezor is a, is a pure player of uh, banking as a service, uh, and we are based since the, the very first day of our launch uh, on the French market. Uh, our financial services cover the entire payment chain from acquiring to, to issuing. Uh, we also made the choice to be regulated in France by the SAPR, not the easiest choice to make back in uh, 2015, but in our opinion, it was the it was necessary to become a, a robust and a reliable player. So Twitter was the first best platform in France and is now a strong leader on this market. Uh, we registered a triple digit growth of our activities since 2019, being by far the leading best platform uh, in France. Um, so Trezor remains, um, since the acquisition of uh, by Société Générale in 2018, Trezor remains autonomous as a, a separate legal entity with its own brand and strategy. Uh, nevertheless, uh, on subjects such as compliance or risk management, uh, Trezor is aligned with Société Générale. Uh, but beyond compliance and security, Société Générale Group brings to Trezor new services such as a credit offer uh, via Franc Finance uh, for revolving credit debt and consumer loan. Uh, Trezor brings on its side to Société Générale a new distribution channel, as well as the capacity to develop projects in synergy with the group. For instance, uh, we developed BanksUp, which is a child wallet for Société Générale and is powered uh, by, uh, by Trezor. So our presence in Europe, uh, today our main focus is to support uh, our clients in their European expansion and also to support uh, the best local startups and corporate clients to integrate payment services in their customer journey to offer a, a seamless experience. So, as you can see on, on the map, uh, we expanded locally in, in, uh, in Spain, Italy, uh, Germany, who have a representative in Belgium. Uh, also now, 10% uh, of our portfolio is made of European companies, and also uh, it has an impact on the uh, on the talents and the employees that we have at Trezor. Uh, we are, uh, let's say, we have between 180 and 200 employees today, but 
with more than 20 different nationalities in our team. So this is linked directly to our uh, European uh, growth and uh, strategy. So <laughs> Trezor is, uh, is well known to be uh, now a, a fintech enabler and a, a unicorn farmer. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, we have supported uh, many uh, French uh, unicorns or unicorns to be. Uh, and uh, uh, today, the, I think the, the, lens, the French fintech landscape uh, would have been different uh, without a player like Trezor. Um, Trezor has always been behind the scenes as a backend solution, but today it could be considered as a real pillar of the European payment uh, industry. And today, with the support of Studio General, uh, Trezor now serves some Tier 1 and Tier 2 corporate lands with its technology. Uh, so here you can see the top uh, use case uh, that we address uh, with our API, uh, such as digital banking, uh, savings, accounting, uh, marketplace and crowdfunding, issuing and uh, expense or employee benefits, and uh, e-wallet, electronic money. So um, Trezor is uh, well known for uh, the neobank and the card issuing activity. But uh, with our license and the flexibility of our API, we can support many various uh, business cases in different industries, such as insurance, property management, uh, automotive, and energy. Uh, we have always been very open to, uh, to creativity, and we always try to find out solutions to build new customer experience. Uh, while we have uh, industrialized our services in a 100% cloud infrastructure, we continue to adapt to customer needs to offer a unique experience or product in order to bring innovation and to help our clients to win market shares. So this is always uh, in our DNA and this has not changed uh, since uh, we have been uh, bought by Sauté General. Uh, also, uh, now there are three different ways of integrating uh, Trezor. Uh, so, in addition to our first business uh, based on the BAS uh, strategy uh, for scale-ups, uh, we propose two new approaches on the technical and a regulatory level. Uh, a full-service solution with uh, our new product, Trezor Connect, that allows you to, to start a payment project more quickly, easily, and by limiting the global and technical complexity. And also, a white label digital core banking platform so when a customer holds the license uh, because of a strong growth, he decided to, to change his strategy, they still have two main focus to cover, uh, the technical platform and the banking services. On the technical side, uh, Trezor provides the, the core platform and Sostegenal offers the banking services. So we are able to propose uh, within a joint offer all the banking services a regulated institution needs, including safeguarding accounts, and access to the SEPA schemes. So uh, thank you for, for listening and happy to answer all your questions if, if you have any on, uh, on Trezor. Thank you very much, uh, Cedric. It was very clear. Uh, and we have a first question. Uh, Cedric, do you propose your technology to non-financial players? Uh, maybe you can uh, illustrate uh, with some of your, 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 your customers. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. We uh, we propose technology to uh, non-financial actors. Uh, I'm not sure I can disclose <laughs> the names of the of the clients using it, but uh, yes, uh, everywhere. Uh, I mean, there's payment. Uh, you could uh, you could use uh, Trezor uh, technology. Great. Uh, we have another question. Um, uh, we, we saw that you were operating in, uh, in several countries in Europe. Uh, do you uh, intend to expand in other countries? So, yeah, to, to, so today Trezor is passported in 25 countries, uh, but uh, our key focus on the business strategy is, uh, is Western Europe. So besides the country that uh, we are based in, we, are, uh, we could extend to uh, uh, the Benelux, Portugal, and Austria, but uh, uh, for now we really focus on Western uh, on Western Europe. 
Great, thank you. And we have a, a connected questions. I mean, on the on your your uh, geographical expansion, uh, do you intend to expand uh, in uh, North Africa, for example? Uh, so we had many discussions about uh, North Africa uh, because of uh, strategic also uh, position uh, uh, there. Uh, today it's not uh, on the roadmap, but we still uh, uh, work on the opportunities uh, and that the, our technology could bring also to, to this market. So uh, never say no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cedric. Uh, we have now a question about the, the collaboration between Trezor and, uh, and Société Générale. Um, are you aligned uh, on the long-term strategy with Société Générale? And what is the degree of collaboration between uh, you, Cedric, Trezor and uh, Société Générale? So I think we agree on the long-term strategy. Uh, as I said, Trezor is independent of the strategy. Of course, we uh, uh, we have uh, many discussions on the, uh, the the strategy we should uh, adopt. But uh, I think today we are quite aligned on what we are doing at Trezor, and we have a, a very uh, close and positive collaboration with uh, with the General. Uh, they uh, uh, to, today, thanks to I mean the. This acquisition, we uh, we are able to uh, to propose and uh, our, our technology and to speak uh, to large corporate clients, which was which was, was not the case uh, in the past. Uh, I think we were we were too small, and uh, now I think we are more mature and we have more credibility because uh, we have been many uh, progress uh, on the security, on the compliance uh, aspects, and this is key for corporate clients. Uh, and they are very vigilant uh, on these matters, and uh, I think that's a, a great, uh, uh, a great win-win uh, relationship. As I said, with uh, with uh, with AG, and uh, we're looking forward to expand uh, the strategy on corporate clients. Thank you, Cedric. Now we have a question from Guillaume uh, about the competition and uh, and Solaris. Uh, which threat uh, Solaris represent for Trezor? And how does Trezor differentiate uh, from other bass players? Okay, so uh, maybe first question on, on Solaris. Uh, so yes, Solaris is in France. Uh, I mean, Solaris is a is our let's say our German cousin. <laughs> uh, we have started almost at, a, at the same time. Uh, they they are the 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 leader uh, in uh, in Germany since Wirecard is not operating anymore. So they have a great expansion and a great growth. Uh, today in France, I think they are starting. Uh, so we, 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 we see them uh, on the market, but I think Trezor is, uh, today is, uh, uh, is far ahead uh, in the French market. Uh, so we, we still, of course, uh, uh, try to analyze the, uh, but I think Solaris is still behind the level of services they can bring in France uh, to uh, to French or, or uh, fintechs or corporate clients. Um, what differentiates ourselves? Uh, I think uh, first when we when you sign with Trezor, you sign with the uh, with a vision, right? Uh, it's the we were the pioneer of this market. Uh, we created this market, so. Uh, I think that's really important to understand that we drive the market today. Um, so the other best players, they intend to to, uh, to copy our strategy, so which is fine. But I think that's first, the first point I think is this. Second point, uh, you, you need to deep dive because if you go on the website of uh, each best players, uh, you will see maybe the same uh, services, right? Uh, card issuing, acquiring, uh, SEPA, account opening. Uh, but if you go, uh, I think one of our strengths is that we created this market and we made it with uh, amazing fintechs. So when we co-build the Conto, when we co-build the Lydia, Swile, uh, Pixpay, uh, we, we, I think we, the client need to understand that behind this uh, each use case, uh, we have uh, made specific uh, development to make them happen. And uh, as a mutualized platform, when you join Trezor today, you benefit uh, from the mutualization of a hundred of clients. Uh, and so each of our functionality uh, developed for all these clients 
are available for all of our clients, for all of the, all the portfolio. And I think that's a, a key and a very strong difference besides, of course, of what I said uh, uh, of the support of Société Générale, huh, which is a, a, also a, a very strong argument. But from a technology perspective, uh, we, I think, deliver much more services and functionalities than all the other players in the market because we have been co-building so much business case uh, with uh, our portfolio uh, over the last uh, six years now. Yes, thank you. I think the, the track record of Trezor is talking for 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 himself. Uh, and, and when when you co-build something with uh, with Conto, Conto wouldn't have, wouldn't have been Conto without uh, Trezor. I think so. And and the same for Swell. Uh, we have another question for from Martin um, about your vision, your innovation, your new features. Uh, could you talk uh, to, to the public about uh, uh, your upcoming innovation or innovative capability you are working on, Cedric? Yeah, so in the last uh, slide uh, that I presented, I presented the two new approach that we have. Uh, so Trezor Connect is, uh, is a great uh, innovative uh, product that we uh, launched a couple months ago. Uh, it's a, a real, uh, I think uh, also, uh, I won't say, revolution, but real evolution <laughs> uh, that brings this product. Uh, also, the fact that we are able to uh, to help, I think we are the only one today who can help a uh, startup that uh, mean has maybe not raised funds, thanks to Trezor Connect, then you can scale to the best model and uh, use Trezor with your own license. I think uh, uh, there are not other players that can do uh, uh, and support uh, a FinTech from day one to uh, to the end, right? Uh, which is, uh, I think that's a very strong innovation. Uh, the other one is that Cardish Wing is a, is, a, is a key activity for us. And we have been investing a lot uh, in the card uh, issuing and processing uh, technology. And we will uh, soon share to our portfolio and our clients uh, great new functionalities uh, uh, on the card issuing. Uh, I think uh, it will make also the, the difference uh, uh, in the next uh, years to come. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Cedric. Uh, I would have a question about uh, uh, your corporate and large corporate offer. Uh, you're, you're trying to, to, to diversify your, your offering. Now you're targeting also large corporates. Uh, you signed uh, some of them. Could you uh, give us a little bit more details about uh, what you are proposing uh, to them, some use case on which you can, uh, you can work with them? Well, the the use case can be sometimes the same that you can see in the in the fintech space. Uh, I think what makes the difference today is that corporates are, are ready uh, to invest uh, in uh, uh, in the uh, in this technology. Uh, they 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 used to work uh, and have a legacy system, and uh, for some of them, or they were just curious and uh, not willing to go on the payment field. Now that that technology has is so easy uh, to implement uh, i mean the level of investment that uh, you have to make is, is different uh, it's much faster much easier um, so we, we saw many uh, uh, we supported many clients in the mobility uh, field and the employee also uh, benefit field uh, so we are addressing corporates uh, in that field especially again in the issuing space where uh, we are a very uh, i think a strong player today uh, but we are also support uh, corporates and uh, uh, the automation of their payments sepa payments uh, they, they they used to uh, to use banks <laughs> and use uh, and and uh, and use files uh, now with uh, with our apis i think it makes it much more uh, simpler and uh, to use and uh, they have much more information, instant information, instant payments. So uh, uh, we'll have help them also to, to solve the, the issues they have uh, uh, on the immediate, uh, immediate payments. OK, great. Thank you, Cedric. We have a last question uh, uh, on, your, uh, on, your, on the recruitment. Uh, is Trezor hiring in the next week, the next month? Uh, Yes, <laughs> the answer is yes. Trezor is hiring. We have uh, many open positions uh, uh, in the different teams. So uh, uh, 
happy to receive your uh, your resume and uh, and uh, and receive you at our office in Trisor, Paris or Rennes or uh, in remote if you are based somewhere else. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, very happy to uh, to to receive your your resume. But uh, we have uh, I think uh, more than twenty positions open today uh, at Trisor. Are you also hiring in uh, in Spain, Italy, or Germany? Yes, uh, we already have uh, small local teams based there, uh, and we have uh, open positions as well for uh, next year. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Cedric. Uh, it was uh, fantastic to have you today. Uh, I think we have a maybe a last question, if we have one minute left uh, from Mark. Okay. Cedric, sorry. Uh, okay. um, uh, Mark is asking uh, another question uh, about the competition, I think, uh, and okay. about one. Uh, what what is your vision, Cedric, uh, regarding the the French bass competition? Well, uh, I mean, Swan is also a great uh, a great player, a new player coming in with a, a different approach uh, than Trisor. Uh, maybe it's a complementary, maybe. Uh, but um, I think the the I'm not talking about Swan here directly, uh, but I'm not sure there will be a space for all the bass players in the French market. So at one stage, uh, there will be a consolidation uh, in this market. Uh, it's a very tough uh, business to uh, uh, to run. Uh, it's not easy. And uh, we see that some new players, which is the game, huh, they try to uh, to pull the price pricing down uh when they want to win market shares but uh, uh at the end uh, i not think it's uh, uh i mean you can't do this for a long time right uh, especially in the, i think everybody knows how difficult the market is right now so i'm glad that some uh, fintechs have a bit of cash in front of them uh, but we are in a different uh i think strategy different level uh, of support with Société Générale. Um, you know that Trisor will be there in the next coming years. I think that's uh, not an issue anymore. It was uh, one of the questions that usually uh, uh, we had in 2016. What happens if Trisor uh, di disappears? <laughs> Which is not a question that we have anymore, but uh, uh, I think there will be consolidation because you can't have uh, I mean, 10 best players uh, supporting uh, external business. But what we can see maybe is that uh, maybe each bank, tier one bank, will have his own bus. Uh, this is something we we have always imagined, and we can see that there is a market moving a bit in this direction. So maybe serving their own uh, business case, but not necessarily uh, external uh, project. Okay, very very clear, Cedric. Thank you very much for your for your for your time for your presentation. Uh, if you are a startup, if you are a corporate, and uh, that you want to 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 uh, propose financial services and payment to to your customers, just uh, contact Cedric. You had the the mail, uh, and he will ask okay, you uh, goodbye. Good questions. Goodbye, Cedric. Now we are welcoming uh, Jan Lastovka, the CEO of Lemonero, uh, which is proposing to to its clients some revenue based finance. Uh, product. Uh, Lemon, uh, Jan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me here. Hello to all. Uh, so today I would like to tell you a bit about us, like how we are trying to disrupt the SMB's financing uh, market in e-commerce specifically. So who we are uh, with Lemonero, we are the fintech platform uh, offering the AI-driven revenue-based financing for merchants. So we are bringing working and growth capital to the SMBs uh, uh, companies in e-commerce. And we are doing this with close cooperation with e-commerce platforms and, and payment service providers uh, uh, as embedded solution. Uh, why we are here and what's the problem on the market? Uh, the key problem is that more than 80 percent of merchants i mean talk about small and medium-sized companies in e-commerce and omnichannel space they have a problem with the access to working and growth capital so basically they need more money to buy inventory to invest into marketing and, uh, and also to have a money for uh, you know some kind of problem with the cash flow that always happens sometimes yeah. during the you know uh, their cycle and 
there are two problems. So first one is they are too risky for the like the banks and the, and the standard financial institutions so, uh, from the let's say data point of view. And the second thing is even they are eligible, they have a problem with a uh, uh, with onboarding process because it takes so much time. It's so complicated, and during the Christmas season, for example, they need the money immediately. So a little bit, uh, so like the access to working capital and the time, there were key, two key problems that that uh, and it's one of the, like one of the biggest problems in SMB's market at all. And we decided to change it. And so we found it, we found it Lemonero, which is the cloud-based platform with a unique AI-driven scoring model, which allows to bring much more capital to much more companies in SMEs because we use totally unique behavioral parameters for validating the businesses uh, to be able to predict uh, their future performance much better than anybody else. And thank to, thanks to this, we can bring, as I mentioned, much more capital to much more companies. Uh, so young companies, high growth companies in e-commerce segment and omnichannel segment at all. And also we saw the second problem thing that there was a, uh, now you, uh, the onboarding process takes only 10 minutes. So from the first click to confirm signing, it takes only 10 minutes for the merchant. And so in 15 minutes, they have money on their bank account. They can use it immediately. And it's fully automated and online. So it's super scalable platform. And uh, th th that's who we are. So we are uh, we are the player that, that, that want to bring, uh, and we, our, our vision is to, uh, to bring much more capital, growth capital to the underfinance SMEs market and help these companies growth. Because from my point of view, this is one of the most important things uh, from, let's say, a uh, global economy point of view, because the SME segment is really, really a large player uh, and they, they need the money. So this is, this is the reason why we are here. This is the way uh, and the vision that we, want, that we have and uh, we want to achieve. Uh, let's go a little bit deeper. As I mentioned, uh, we have a couple of wow effects for the merchants, for our customer. First of all, they know immediately they're eligible to get a funding. So usually in two clicks, in one or two minutes, they know immediately, okay, I am or I'm not eligible to get a funding. And we are able to approve more than 80% of, uh, of, you know, of requests that we that we receive for the for the financing, which is really 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 unique number. Second thing, as I mentioned, hold on burning process is end to end, couple of clicks and you have money on your bank account. And now we're offering uh, funding up to one hundred thousand uh, euros. So we started to offer financing to micro and small uh, services because they need the money most, and for them it's, it's it's really hard to access the money from the bank and for the or other institutions, other players. So, and now we are going up. Uh, and increasing the, uh, the limits and uh, are able to serve larger and larger companies. Uh, also, we offering revenue-based financing. So this is a very popular and a very useful model for SMBs because this is mirroring the cash flow. It basically means that we charge every single repayment come for the payment gate by our point of sale system and using it for the collection for the, as, a, as a repayment. So it's perfectly comfortable and, 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 and it, it, it comes uh, with a financial stability of the merchants because a lot of merchants in SMEs, they are seasonal, they need, uh, so they need to repay the money when they have a revenue uh, and when they have the money on the bank account. So it's a very important thing. So uh, that, that's a part of the product. Uh, we were awarded as the best digital lending uh, platform in the CE last year. So there was like an improvement that we are really uh, we're doing a really great job. We have a great platform. Uh, so, and now we are scaling across to Europe. And uh, uh, that's another thing because on one side, uh, we have really great platform able to bring more capital uh, to more businesses much faster in an easy way. But for us and for the merchant especially, it's uh, important to, uh, to be able to to, to be as close as possible to money and uh, now we're talking about the ecosystem so that's the reason why we're offering uh, embedded partnerships uh, like white label partnership with e-commerce platforms marketplaces and permissive providers and they can easily uh, integrate lemonero under their brand or our api in their ecosystem and it's a, it's a key thing because for the merchants the um, for example, they are in the back office of their online store, of the eShop. Uh, they can easily access the money through that ecosystem. And this is a really important thing that I will show you later in the demo. So we usually cooperate with e-commerce platforms, marketplaces, and payment service providers, and we bring YAPI, hold the platform, including lending platform, uh, scoring model, compliance, licensing, support, and also the money, thanks to cooperation with, uh, with SG and the KB and Czech Republic and, and the CE market. 
So uh, for our distribution partners, thanks to that connectivity and thanks to that model, it's very easy to launch merchant financing, revenue-based financing for the portfolio and for our end user, which is the merchant owner of, uh, of, 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 of the company, uh, of e-commerce company looking for the capital, thanks to debt cooperation, it's for them very easily to get access to the money through the ecosystem they know. So, so this is the way how we are cooperating with a large, uh, large platform, large players. And um, uh, also for the, for the merchants and for the platforms, uh, debt cooperation brings a lot of values. First one is increased transaction volume. Uh, we can we know that uh, when we once we are given funding to the merchants, uh, we can we are boosting their growth approximately from 30% uh, 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 of revenue and, and higher. Uh, also, it's a new and recovering revenue stream for the partners. We're reducing client churn, we're increasing over life and value, and also we raised uh, retention rates. So, Lemonero as a, like a digital lending platform for e-commerce. We are bringing like a great new innovation and, uh, and another, another, another way how to, how to grow faster for the e-commerce companies and omnichannel companies in SMEs. Uh, we are uh, based in Prague. We, we operate in the CE market. Now we're launching in our region and, and Benelux countries. Uh, we are the fastest growing platform in Europe uh, in that space. And we cooperate with a with a with a GoPay from Worldline, with the leading with leading uh, PSPs and e-commerce platforms in that areas, and uh, we are super proud that uh, that the references and the and, and and the feedback we have is really awesome. Uh, we are like the third year of the market right now, and we're going really fast. And so we'll, we are happy and we are open for uh, for the new partners that that, that can come to cooperate with us. So. It was like 10 minutes, I guess. So I think uh, uh, thanks for that. And then now if we can switch the, uh, switch from my presentation, uh, I will show you uh, I will show you the demo uh, how Lemonado looks like from the customer point of view. So I hope you can see it perfect. So as I mentioned, imagine this is a back office of, of any, any um, e-commerce platform called in this example, my platform. So in this ecosystem, in, 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 in this space, the owner or manager of the online store usually spends 90, 90, 95% of the time. And now we can see there is a financing option. So all the content is delivered by us and, and the, the merchant I can easily say, okay, I'm interesting and I want to see if I'm eligible to get a funding. So in two clicks, uh, in usually one minute, all the scoring process is, is happening. and. Boom, we are telling them, hey, we got news for you. We can give you, in this case, up to 40, 40, uh, 40, uh, 40 thousand euros. I said, okay, perfect. So they know immediately they are eligible to get the funding. Then they can set up, okay, let's charge, let's say 20 percent over the single transactions. This is revenue-based financing, and I will take 50, 15 thousand euros. Uh, there is only one uh, fee, no hidden fees, so it's fully transparent, uh, no securitization. So we bear all the risk, we are the lender. And he said, okay, based on your uh, performance, the future performance, we count that it takes six months uh, of repaying that loan. And you don't have to think about it because it, it comes from your future revenue. When they confirm there's a KYC, KYB, and all the processes, you know, it's fully automatized. So it's like, okay, everything uh, is all right. And last thing is a digital signature uh, uh, with our company and uh, with the company uh, that's using the lending. And that's all. So that's a whole onboarding process. As I mentioned, it usually takes a couple of minutes. Now they have a money on the bank account. And in this case, they, they have a real-time live dashboard. They can see, okay, how much money I need to repay. It's uh, when they are eligible to top up the funding. Here is a button, okay, what a top up. And in one click, I can have much more money. So this is the way how we are disrupting the, the e-commerce financing uh, with cooperation with e-commerce platforms and payment service providers. And this is as you can see, very easy, uh, very, very easy access to the growth capital, which is, from my point of view, it's one of the most important things for the global economy in the future. So thank you for that. And I'm you know, happy to answer your question. Thank you very much, uh, Jan. It was very clear. I think uh, we have a first question from Kevin, uh, which is asking uh, if uh, Lemonero is available in France. Uh, very good question. Uh, not yet, but we are in progress of launching French market. We want to make a first pilot uh, in Q4 this year, 
but we are you know active uh, from the business development partnership point of view so uh, if there is you know uh, uh, you know interesting in a partnership feel free to contact me jan at lemonor.com and uh, we can we can start a discussion Great. And are you targeting also the, your, your deployment is in, uh, in other countries such as, for example, Spain, Italy, I don't know, Germany or? Yes, as I mentioned, we are now, we are based uh, in Prague, but we have a team, you know, uh, also remotely across to Europe. Uh, but currently we are uh, active and operate in Czech Republic, Slovakia and Poland and in these countries. And now we are launching DAC region, so it means Germany and Netherlands uh, will, will be launched in, uh, in the next weeks and months and also the France. So. Benelux countries, dark region, and France is a target market, key, key target market for us that will that will launch uh, in the next weeks, months. Uh, Great as our timeline. Thank you very much. Uh, another question from Marianne, who, has, who is asking uh, the cost of your solution, um, if you can uh, detail. A little bit mm -hmm. uh yeah sure it depends uh if you're asking about uh let's say embedded partnership cooperation that we usually uh usually uh, cooperate with revenue share model with a distribution partner with a e-commerce platform famous service provider so the integration is for free uh, it's uh to the ecosystem and it comes from the revenue share model based on the uh, partnership level from the merchant's point of view i mean uh what's the what's the cost of the funding uh uh, we have risk-based pricing, so uh, we customize the pricing for every single merchant based on the risk profile and performance of the company. But we can say it's around 1% uh, per month. And we offer financing for free, from free up to 12 months usually. This is a this is, this is a period of, of, of financing. Maybe a question, thank you, Jan. Maybe a question about uh, the, the technical integration. I mean, uh, uh, if I am in that how long does it take to integrate Lemonero, uh, to integrate Lemonero technology and to be live uh, in uh, in my operations? Well, thank you for that. That's a very good question. I think uh, you know once we are integrated in the in the platform, like e-commerce platform, for example, or the payment service provider for the merchant. Uh, you don't have to install anything you know we just you, as you as you see in the, the onboarding process so for the merchant they don't have to install anything uh because once we are compatible with the platform they are using you know it's a couple of minutes couple of quiz no installations which this is the most important thing regarding the co uh, regarding the insta uh how long does it take to let's say, integrate our platform as embedded solution to the partner ecosystem usually uh six six four up to six weeks including all the communication all the testing at all so it's just a couple of mandates as uh, we created as you know, it's a uh, we're using uh, iframe technology api technologies everything is ready on our side so for the for, the, for our our partner is super easy a uh, couple of mandates uh, to and it's a one-time you know a one-time integration costs and and then you know it's everything on our side Okay, thank you. Very clear. Uh, we also we also have a, a question from Clément, uh, who is asking uh, if you are open, Jan, to new partnerships with e-commerce platform payment companies, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. As I mentioned, uh, we are scaling the platform. We are expanding, so we are fully open for cooperation with e-commerce platforms and payment PSPs. So, if there is any interest, Jan at Lemonor.com, and I'll be happy to to talk about the partnership. Uh, just to say, we are focusing right now to SMBs, so we are uh, we are choosing the, the partners that are serving their services to that area. So not enterprise, not the, not, not the big players. We have a vision to bring the capital to the SMBs. So uh, that's just a, a clarification of the segment. Uh, but yes, we are fully open. Okay, and uh, if if I want to 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 join Lemonero, Jan, are you hiring? Uh, are you recruiting in uh, in uh, Czech Republic, in France? I don't know. Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, in Czech Republic, uh, we have a product development team and also the risk team. So we have open positions and uh, job at lemonero.com. Uh, and uh, also we're hiring the new biz dev teams and, uh, and other roles in, in France, Germany, and also the Netherlands. Uh, uh, and then if you're interested, definitely let's contact me again and I'll be happy to you know, speak with any other uh, candidate and, uh, and happy to talk. 
Thank you very much, Jan. I think we, we answered all the questions uh, from the public. Um, so, so yes, if you are, if you are a, a merchant and uh, that you want to to uh, to, to, to um, have access to new financing uh, solution, just contact Jan. Uh, uh, he can answer to your questions. Uh, you you probably saw it, but Lemonero just raised uh, tw twelve million euros, so they are just expanding right now. So that, that's a good moment, I think. Thank Absolutely. you. <laughs> yes, if you want to. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so bye bye. Thank you for, for your presentation, Jan. Uh, and we are now uh, ending uh, this first um, edition of uh, SG Ventures uh, Day Demo Day. So, after having the chance to attend to, to the presentation of these uh, three fantastic startups uh, uh, operating in the uh, bath and e commerce space, uh, the first session of SG Ventures Day uh, Demo Day is now over. Uh, thank you all for attending this event. Thank you for your questions, for your time, and thank you, Jan, thank you, Reda, and Cedric for your time and presentations. We hope these presentations will be useful for you and that you will be able to take contact with uh, the startups in the near future and in order to start great business collaboration, collaborations. Uh, new sessions of Demo Day around uh, other topics such as impact will follow in September and October. So stay tuned and follow us at uh, Societe Générale Ventures LinkedIn. Bye bye, have a good day. Se mobiliser, réinventer, continuer à avancer.